Hey, welcome friends. Glad you're here with us, whether you're coming back for another time or whether it's your very first time, we're in the middle of a worship series called The Man. And we're grateful that you're here. I'm Daniel, I'm one of the pastors here on staff and we're excited for you to share with us in worship online. I want to encourage you, uh, if you don't mind, to check in with us. We're always grateful for that. There's a QR code there on the screen for you, or you can use the TMUMC app on your phone. Either way helps us connect with you. We like to do that not only to know that you're here, but also so that we can reach out and touch base with you and, and just let you know how much we care. So we sure appreciate that. But no, we're trying to talk about and relate to Jesus, the man. And we're really excited about that. And so we're grateful that you're here. Wonder if you would join me in a word of prayer as we begin our time together. God of grace and mercy, thank you. Thank you not only for this day, but for the gift of your son, Jesus. For we are mindful that he was both human and divine, fully both. And that in the midst of that, he brings to us a relatability and a connection that helps us to know him better and to know how to grow in a relationship with him better, God. So I just pray that you'd guide us this day and help us to be encouraged by all that we find in Christ. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, we're in this series and we're looking at the humanity of Christ because what we believe as Christians is that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. And I'm convinced that the best way we understand Jesus as Lord is to first understand him as a human. And so we're going to be discussing and, and better trying to understand what it means for Jesus to be son, to be friend, to be teacher, to be prophet. And last week, of course, Pastor Nick did a phenomenal job of helping us to better understand Jesus as son and recognizing the great wisdom that Jesus had as God's son and the obedience that he calls us to in being God's son. Today, we're going to transition from Jesus as son to Jesus as friend. Isn't that cool? It's one of my favorite understandings of Jesus because who doesn't need or want a friend? And friendship is such a powerful gift, isn't it? I mean, when you think about your friends, your deep, long-standing friends, those friends upon whom you can rely, and you think very well about things like how caring they are, how compassionate they are, the ways in which they're loyal and dependent uh, for you, you can trust them, they're honest. That's what real friendship is, right? Jesus offers us this gift. I, I reflect on my own good, good friend, James. James and I met almost 35 years ago back in seminary, back when I had hair, and lots of it, really. But we've been uh, knowing each other these almost 35 years, and James and I connect almost weekly, even though he lives in Chicago, I live here, obviously. But man, we've, we've been through so much in our lives together. We recognize how we can relate and rely on each other. We've been through deaths in our families and births. We've been through our own vocational challenges. We've been through relocation after relocation, which is clearly a, a challenge among Methodist clergy, right? We get sent where we go. We've uh, uh, had discussions about the denomination. We've had relationships about our own ministry settings. In fact, early on in our relationship, man, we, we shared some of the same ministry settings. That was always fun and a challenge when you like somebody and know somebody well, right? Every time we connect, we hold each other accountable in faith. We lift each other up. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, man, we're always there for each other. This is what good friends do, isn't it? It's what we rely on and look forward to with whoever those good friends are. And Jesus is one of those friends. When I reflect on some of the ways that Jesus was a friend, it's, it's phenomenal. I think about the way Jesus was so caring and compassionate to that guy named Zacchaeus, the tax collector that nobody loved, nobody wanted to be around, everybody hated, but Jesus went to eat with him. I love the way he gave great dignity to the woman who was caught in adultery and offered her care and compassion. The way he gave himself fully to a woman he found at the well in the community that everybody else was shunning and nobody else would relate to. I love the way Jesus welcomed a man named Nicodemus in the dark of night because Nicodemus was afraid that his Jewish colleagues would condemn him. The way Jesus gave such uh, authority to the woman who washed his feet with her hair. Jesus was even a friend to Judas. When he came to betray Jesus with a kiss, Jesus offered him an intimate conversation in those last hours of his life. 
Jesus is an amazing friend. He offers us such care, such opportunity, and such willing hopefulness. Friends, what I want to share with you today is the capacity to which Jesus is the best kind of friend we can have. And if we will finally recognize Him as that friend, He will do so much for us and help us in so, so very many different ways. One of my favorite stories about Jesus as a friend uh, is found in John chapter 11. Now, we're only going to read a small portion of it today, but I want to encourage you today, either as soon as you finish here or uh, later tomorrow, read all of chapter 11. John's gospel is full of these long, powerful, profound stories in Jesus' life, and John chapter 11 is one of those. So I want to encourage you to hear just a portion of it where Jesus demonstrates an amazing gift of friendship. It's about a guy named Lazarus, and here is a part of that story. So Jesus is told that Lazarus, his friend, is going to die, and Jesus has some words to share, and he's in a different location. And this is what we understand in verse 11. So Jesus continued, our friend, notice he identifies, our friend Lazarus is sleeping, but I am going in order to wake him up. After she said this, meaning Martha, she went and spoke privately to her sister, Mary. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. He had entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were comforting Mary in the house saw her get up quickly and leave, they followed her. They assumed she was going to mourn at the tomb. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, where have you laid him? And they replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, See how much he loved him. You can almost feel the sort of containment of how much Jesus loved Lazarus and loved Mary and Martha. There was a deep sense of connection, relationship, and friendship. I want to talk about some things that Jesus teaches us about friendship because he's such a good friend. And the first one is really kind of hard. It's one of the hardest parts of of a good, close friendship. I'm going to use a simple word, just the word helpful. I think when we're good, good friends with somebody, we're always going to be helpful. Part of what we did not read in the story today is earlier in this same chapter, Jesus is notified that his friend's going to die. And he says, uh, to great surprise to his disciples and eventually to Mary and Martha, I'm not going to go yet. I'm not going to follow out there, and I'm not going to go and help Lazarus yet. I will, but not yet. And initially, you can imagine, it kind of bothers Mary and Martha. It clearly bothers his disciples when you read there in chapter 11. But Jesus has a point. He knows what he needs to do. He knows how he needs to do it. And we don't always understand that. Have you ever had a good, good friend who... who did something for you, said something to you that in the moment, man, you were kind of ticked off or you didn't appreciate or you thought that was not going to be helpful at all. But in the end, it worked out really well. And what your friend was trying to do, even when you couldn't recognize it, was help you. That's what good friends do. They take the opportunity to do what's right, to do what's best, to be helpful. You've got a good friend I know who's done that for you. We don't always understand it in the moment, but in good time, we recognize how helpful they are. And of course, that's what Jesus did, right? He helped raise Lazarus from the dead, but he needed to die first. But nobody understood that. The second thing that Jesus teaches us that's very helpful is good friends, listen. In several instances in chapter 11, Jesus listens intently to the disciples when they're in great dismay over what it is that he's going to do or not do, as they saw in verse 6, for instance. In verses 21 and 38, um, Jesus says, uh, or listens rather, to both Mary and Martha as they both uh, accost him and say, Jesus, if you'd only been here, my brother would still be alive. Jesus was willing to listen. He was willing to hear their pain, their heartache, their sorrow, 
and he was willing to act upon it because good friends are not only helpful, but they listen. The third thing Jesus did that all good friends do was he was empathetic. He offered some empathy to Mary and to Martha and even to the Jews around. That's a part of what we just read, right? He realized Lazarus was already dead. He realized he was already in the grave. He wanted to go see where he was because, of course, what he wanted to do. And notice, they are dismayed and hurting. And then Jesus weeps. He cries for Lazarus, his good friend. He cries for the sorrow of Mary and Martha. He has great empathy. He can connect and relate and understand what their pain is all about. Friends, a good, good friend always has empathy. And Jesus teaches us that phenomenal lesson. The last thing that a good friend does always is gives us life. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody that just sucks the life out of you? <laughs> you ever been in a relationship where you just thought to yourself, why am I here? You need to sever that relationship or you need to change how it works, right? The powerful gift that Jesus obviously gave to Lazarus was physical, tangible life. Remember, uh, we didn't read this, but here's what happens after Jesus goes to that tomb and, and, and sees what Lazarus has, what's happened to Lazarus. We're told towards the end of the chapter. When he, meaning Jesus, had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. You see, good friends, man, they bring joy. They bring life. They bring the opportunity to know that life is a gift. And so friends, I just want to share with you, not only does Jesus give life and we receive that blessed gift in his faithfulness, but any good friend you have or you are to others is about giving life offering joy, helping people to know that life is a blessing. You see, here's what Jesus did, man. Jesus helped us better understand that He desires to be our friend. He's willing to be our friend. He wants to be there for us and offer us this life. There's this other great encounter in John's Gospel that talks about Jesus as our friend. Listen in chapter 13 where it says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. This is Jesus sharing with his disciples what he's about to do, not only for them, but for you and for me and for the whole world. He considers us friends and he's going to lay down his life for us. He goes on to say, you are my friends if you do what I command. And remember his command was love one another as I have loved you. And finally, Jesus says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends, since I have told you everything the Father told me. Jesus wants to be our friend, y'all. He desires to be our friend. And he, he demonstrates over and over again, many of those stories I just shared with you, that he can be our friend. And he has this great relatability. That's what I love about Jesus and why we wanted to offer this worship series called The Man is... Ultimately, Jesus is relatable. We can relate to Him. Because He's both fully human and fully divine, we can fully relate to this humanity because He's been through everything we've ever been through ourselves. He's been through great highs and joys and elations, as well as lows and sorrows and tragedies. He's faced it all. The writers of Hebrew put it so well when they said in Hebrews chapter 4, you know, for our high priest, and this was the description the Hebrew writer was giving to Jesus, our high priest is able to understand our weaknesses. He's been tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. Jesus is relatable. I want to tell you, I want to implore you and invite you to reach out to Jesus, your friend. I know that in my uh, life, I have reached out to him on so many occasions. Uh, when my sister took her own life, I cried out to my friend Jesus. When my mom and dad died, I cried out to my friend Jesus and asked for help and hope. When I've had those uh, encounters that, you know, those near misses in life, I shouted for joy and thanked Jesus for helping me. When my two kids were born, I shouted out for joy and praised and thanked Jesus for the opportunity for their lives. I reach out to Jesus on a regular basis for counsel, for guidance, for encouragement. 
even for an ultimate challenge about what I need to do next or how I need to move forward. Friends, Jesus is our friend. And the best gift that he offers us is his presence, is the reality that he's with us and he's for us. Here's what I love best about Jesus as our friend. You know, I don't know about you, but in my own life, there have been times when fellow followers of Jesus, or even what I might refer to as the collective church, the body of Christ, has let me down. I, I think sometimes has even let the world down by their actions, by their words, by their behavior, where they've done things that misrepresent Jesus or misrepresent the church. You've, you've encountered that. We've seen it in the last many months or last many years where people say and do things in the name of Christ that are hateful or spiteful or hurtful or wrong. That's not Jesus. Jesus is truthful and right and hopeful and loving and caring and compassionate. And He's always with us. That's the gift that Jesus brings. He's our friend. And the best example of friendship is being present, right? I mean, when is it that you need a friend the most? Either when you're sharing a great joy and a powerful event in your life, or when you're at the deepest, darkest low in your life, you need somebody real who's there with you and for you. And that's what Jesus does. And we can encounter Him on so many levels. Pastor Nick mentioned several of those last week, right? Read Scripture. We can see and feel and know Jesus' presence there. To pray to Him, have a dialogue, a conversation, to celebrate Him in worship, to serve Him in the world, to be in relationship with other people, finding Jesus in them. What a powerful gift that is. Friends, I have a simple word for you today. You have a friend in Jesus. He is the most powerful and profound gift that you will ever experience. And He's right there with you. I am so grateful that I know He's my friend. And I give thanks to God that I know He's your friend. Believe in the truth. You've got a friend in Jesus. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and loving God, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus who is our friend, who's there for us in times of darkness and despair, who offers us great hope and joy in times of celebration. God, thank you that we have a friend in Jesus and he offers us the greatest blessing of all, his presence, his reality, his being there for us and with us. God, for that, we give you great thanks. And we pray this in the name of our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey friends, let me just share with you my great gratitude for the powerful ways you continue to help make ministry possible for Treach, for us to offer the friendship of Christ to other people. Your generosity helps us do that all the time. Just want to remind you, you can always make a gift to the church either by scanning the QR code that's on the screen right now, or you can text the letters T-M-U-M-C to the number 45777. But whatever you give, we're grateful and we give you thanks for all that you make possible. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons form There's a power on my lips even death can't defy when the name of our God is lifted high. Cause there is resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. So come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave resound. There is resurrection power in His name There are days I have seen Filled with heartache and loss They have buried my heart beneath the waves But every time His praise breaks out
Everybody, hope you enjoyed worship today. I am your resource for all things digital. So I want to tell you about a really great way for you to get connected digitally this week. I want you to scan the QR code that you see on the screen to check out our worship series study. For every worship series, we meet on Zoom every Thursday at 7 p.m. to dig a little bit deeper into the message and the scripture that we're covering for the month. I hope you'll try it out, meet some new people, and again, scan the QR code or I'll include a link in the description of this video. Thank you for worshiping with us this week. If you'd like to find out more about TREACH, go to the church's website, tmumc.org, and have a fabulous week.